was so impressed by this seminar that they wanted me to come and become a part of the mint to go and teach the subject around not only Malaysia but the region the bank does have halal transactions we don't deny that but we feel that those halal transactions are only window dressing that the bulk of the revenue of the bank actually comes from other transactions the one that is the mainstay of the bank bringing in all the revenue illa masha Allah is a transaction which they erroneously describe as murabaha murabaha is a transaction which yields a profit in which all parties to the transaction would be aware of the quantum of profit so you're selling it to me for fifty dollars and you know how much profit you're making and I know how much profit you're making and we both agree Murabaha the problem is that the norm now listen carefully the norm of a business transaction in Islam is a cash transaction. If you defer with me, stop me right away. And while a credit transaction is permissible, the Prophet himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, buying on credit mean buy now, pay later, that credit transaction. While the Prophet himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, engaged in credit transactions. He bought food, like wheat and flour and so on, to pay later. A credit transaction was the exception to the norm. The norm is cash transactions. And so to determine market price, we look at cash price to determine market price. When the Prophet ﷺ and his companions bought on credit, go and search. Every single hadith, go and search it. You'll never find a single hadith, a single instance in which the credit price was different from the cash price. Never. So whether you buy cash or whether you buy credit, the price was the same. If you had an increase in price because it's a credit transaction, it means that time equal money. But Allah says no. Time cannot, money cannot grow over time. If you didn't plant, you can't reap. The only way that money can grow is if there is effort. And a business decision means effort as well. And so cash price and credit price must be the same. Credit price cannot be higher than cash price. What Islamic banks do, and this is only one transaction of theirs, I'm not saying that all their transactions are haram, not at all. I'm focusing on only one. There are others on which I can speak, but we don't have the time for that today. Yes. Uh, 
I just answered that question, Imtiaz. I said, examine every single hadith. Yes. If you examine every single hadith, you will never find the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. in a credit transaction. You will never find the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in a credit transaction permitting a higher price for credit than for cash. And the answer is simple. It is possible for you to understand that if you give on credit and in the process of giving on credit you increase the price over the cash price then the only justification for the increase would be time. So money has increased in consequence of time. There's no other reason. And money increasing over time is the purest definition of riba. What the Islamic banks have been doing is saying, you want to buy that house? You don't have the money to buy it? We will buy it. And then we we'll sell it to you. The house is available in the market for a hundred thousand dollars. Can you buy a house for a hundred thousand? No. How's that shaky head? The house is available in the market for a hundred thousand dollars. The Islamic bank says, we'll sell the house to you for three hundred thousand dollars. And so this is not a loan. No, no, no. This is buying and selling. This is not lending. And when we sell the house to you for 300,000, we give you so much time to pay. So it's a credit transaction. But my question is, why would I buy for 300,000? when it's available in the market for a hundred thousand. If I'm buying it cash, then someone should make an appointment for me to go and dance. <laughs> but I buy in cash. I buy in credit. Why would I pay three hundred thousand when the market price is a hundred thousand? There's only one honest answer to that question. The answer is, you're giving me time to pay. That's why I'm prepared to pay an additional 200,000. That is riba. But the Islamic banks presented to the Muslims as a halal alternative to commercial banking. There are those who will differ with me. And they're still my brothers and I still love them. And even if we have to box over the issue, at the end of the day we must have love for each other. I insist on that. We can defer as much as we want to defer. But our love for each other as brothers must remain. Hmm? Allow me the freedom to express my opinion. And you have your freedom to express your opinion. And let the people decide and choose. Hmm? Islamic banks have been presenting this as the alternative to riba. But there are those who don't want an alternative. They don't want to stop going to the commercial banks. They don't have any problem with that. They are part-time Muslims. So the only ones who will come to the Islamic bank are those who don't want to be part-time Muslims. These are the sincere ones whose hearts can be touched. These are the good Muslims. And these are the ones who you, you lead into riba through the back door. Through the back door. I have a lot of respect for Imtiaz. 
I think of him as a son because I can remember the days when I had just come back from Pakistan and graduated and he was just a little boy and I saw so much promise in him and he's done a lot of work, Imtiaz has done a lot of work and I have a lot of respect for the brothers who are in the Muslim Credit Union and when I speak about the Muslim Credit Union I do not do so in a destructive way it is not my intention to destroy when I make comments I do it constructively and I ask you to join with me in the collective fear of Allah I met with the Muslim Credit Union recently with the one who is the managing director whatever it's called and I took up the issue and he admitted to me he said of all our transactions this one Murabaha we recognize to be the weakest of all he was very honest this is the weakest transaction of all Alhamdulillah that that has finally come because when I met with Mufti Shabir Rahimahullah many years ago to take up the issue for the first time there wasn't that kind of admission at all no I then ask if you recognize this to be the weakest transaction of all would you be prepared to recognize that there is an element of doubt in this transaction no they're not prepared to concede that because if they had accepted that there was an element of doubt then the command of Prophet Muhammad would have applied stay away from that which is doubtful and Omar radiallahu ta'ala with specific reference to riba said stay away not only from riba but riba that which is doubtful as to whether it is riba stay away from it these are some of the collective responses the macro responses are there any more macro responses that we are capable of yes Trinidad has something called susu you hear about it susu Susu. Susu is an institution in which you come together. The one who gets the first hand is getting an interest free loan. <laughs> the one who gets the last hand is the one who has been lending free from interest. Eh? And so the strong ones will go in the end and you'll give the weak ones up front. And so we do have an institution in Trinidad which is not a Muslim institution. Is everybody in Trinidad know about Susu? We already have an institution established in our culture for lending money on in, uh, lending money free from interest. Yeah, no Susu. Yeah, no interest in Susu. An interest free loan for number one and number two and number three and so on and number 12 and number 11 and so on the ones who are giving the loan on free from interest and so there's nothing to prevent us from coming together to form institutions financial institutions and you have an empty as someone who has profound experience already in that subject so you just have to go to him how can we come together to establish financial institutions where our money can be collectively brought together and put to work for the benefit of those who are most in need while yet engaging in business transactions money being invested businessmen want capital and you have money and that money can be put to work in that business but when you put the money to work in the business you ain't going to run the business is he business all you're doing is putting your money this is called Mudaraba <laughs> Mudaraba there are many businesses in Trinidad which need capital and they have to go to the bank